the hidden truth behind Joe Biden's tax code. That's today's episode and let's dive into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode at Nova Rice Invest. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, well, this is your channel for real estate education. It has been a very interesting year, right? So we've had our ups and downs and, um, you know, drama with the pandemic and the elections and yada yada. And so we're finally come to the end of the year. But towards the end, that's when we take some time, we think about how we do stuff and that requires preparation so we can start the next year with the right foot, right? And so among some of the many changes that we experienced this time was um, the new uh, president-elect Joe Biden and his introduction to the new tax code. And for that, this is actually a overdue, long due episode, but I was waiting for the right time to record this episode with the expert on the subject. And for that, I have Henry Aldana. Henry, welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. And for those who haven't seen uh, Henry or don't know about Henry, Henry is actually our accountant at Nova Rice, and he has a plethora of experience in anything that has to do with the tax code, how to do it the right way, how to save money on taxes, um, and you know how to plan for your future moves in a way that's gonna help you not only save money today, but also in the future. So today's topic, once again, it's gonna be all about the tax code, what we need to learn, what we need to be aware about, and how we can take advantage of some of the credits that the new tax code has to offer in our investing journey, whether it's in real estate or the stock market or anything that you have planned in the future. So for that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump straight into our tablet. All right, so we have our tablet right here, and what we're gonna do is start talking about all the benefits, all the tax credit that anyone could receive and their personal tax income. So Henry, can you please share some of the great tax benefits that everyone uh, that who's tuning in today could be taking advantage in the new year to come? Sure, well, uh, definitely. I mean, you know, first, um, obviously we know that the, the tax uh, code might be changing. However, there's still uh, opportunities for you not only to take advantage of some right now, but also in future years. So let's begin, I guess, at the personal level. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I think one of the biggest for me, in terms of uh, uh, when I see, I mean, big credits is the fifteen thousand uh, dollars first-time home buyer, where uh, you can you can get when once you purchase your first house, or people who are actually trying to invest in real estate. I mean, this could be one of the major um, tax credits that you will get getting fifteen thousand uh, dollars when you're buying your first property. And that can also be used, I assume, for also. For real estate investment right? yes correct uh, so let's say for example uh, if this is your first time getting into the real estate investing arena and you want to take advantage of the opportunity you can buy a duplex for example a two-family home where you can actually reside on one side and um, your tenant can be on the other side and you can take advantage of the fifteen thousand dollar credit that uh, this code has to offer you and that doesn't apply just to two family homes it could be up to four families uh, which falls into the category of uh, residential mortgages so this is a great opportunity for those who either want to be homeowners or just simply real estate investors. So thank you for sharing that, Henry. But aside from real estate, there are some other credits that people can actually tap into. Which ones are those? Right. Yeah, let, let's talk about also the earned income credit. That's, okay. that's something that uh, right now most uh, taxpayers get a $2,500 earned income credit for each child that you have uh, that is less than, uh, you know, than 17 years old. Mm -hmm. So if you have an example, a child uh, that is six years old or in uh, a daughter that is uh, 13 years old, you're, you're actually getting um, $5,000 earned income credit. And, and the beauty about the earned income oh, credit wow. is that it's actually reimbursable. It's not just a credit. That means that it's money, it's real money that if you, um, even if you, you know, if you're not, even if you're not paying taxes, you get the money back, you get the refund back. And now it, that's increasing to, instead of being $2,500, it's increasing to $3,000. So Excellent. it's increasing $500 more per child. 
Perfect. So this is actually quite helpful. So currently, the credit we're talking about, the earning income credit is twenty five hundred. But going forward, if everything goes well and gets approved, we get to take advantage of a higher credit, which can go up to three thousand dollars per child as long as they're under the age of seventeen. So now we're talking about benefits for home buyers, real estate investors, and、uh, parents. But what about those who don't fall into that category? So let's say, for example, I'm a renter. Do I get to tap into Any benefit at all? Is there any credit out there for me? Well, absolutely. the the new The new proposal、um, includes a thirty percent、um, renters tax credit that you actually can take in your taxes. So these days,、uh, the only ones who can take, I will say, a benefit for owning a house is actually people who actually own a house. So because they can get the the interest uh, mortgage uh, uh, deduction. And also the real estate taxes, they can be deducted on your、right. uh, Schedule A. Now this is something new, renters credit. That means that you can get up to thirty percent of what you pay in rent, and that's actually, I guess, most people will be able to take. And and、uh, definitely, it's something that it's new, and it's、yeah. great because everybody asks me, can I deduct my rent? I have always asked, yeah, and, and usually <laughs> it's no, right? But now it's like, hey, there is something new. For renters, also. So this is excellent. Thirty、uh, percent rent credit. I and I know that the, the rent usually was kind of like left out, right? Like everybody gets to like if you have a child, great. Now you get some tax credit. If you own a home, great. But what about those who are single and then just simply renting? Maybe they have other priorities in life and they have other plans. Why can't they be part of that group of people who get to get some type of credit back and their taxes? So. Now this has been, like you said, a new thing that has been introduced. We are not entirely sure how that's going to unfold, but it's、Correct. certainly something that has been proposed. And、um, just simply be on the lookout to see what happens. Now we're talked about、uh, housing credit,、uh, renters credit, earned income credit. There's been a lot of noise around this whole donut hole in Social Security. Can you explain everybody what that means? Like why there's so much. Controversy around that, like people over four hundred thousand or like less than four. Like, what's the deal with that? Right, well,、um, definitely. Well, we all,、um, as employees, we pay what is called the Social Security um, um, tax. In reality, it's a tax.、Uh, supposedly, it's for partially it's for your retirement where you get your pension. However, it's still a tax, right? So, right now, everybody that earns、uh, anywhere from zero to A hundred and seventy-seven thousand、uh, dollars now gets to contribute to the Social Security uh, tax. Um, now, the new proposal is like if you earn anywhere from one hundred seventy-seven to four hundred thousand dollars per year, now you will not pay. There is a gap. That's what they don't hold. That's the gap that you're not going to contribute any additional、uh, Social Security. Tax, which is twelve point four percent. However, once you start earning four hundred thousand and up, now it kicks it kicks back in. So that means you're gonna have to pay the Social Security tax once you reach again four hundred thousand and up. So I will say, well, that's that's something that they're giving us a credit to everybody that is between one seventy seven to four hundred thousand. However, if you own your own business, you can still control that. You can still make Three hundred and ninety-nine thousand dollars, and the rest you get it as profit. So still,、right. you're going to be able not to. I mean, be able to go around that new proposal. So you're not you're not taxed the additional twelve point four percent when it comes to earning more money. Yes, that's excellent, and、uh, you actually got ahead of myself because the next point I wanted to talk about was business. So this is great that you kind of like use this as a segue. So what you're saying is. As a business owner, let's say I have a company and I decided to put myself as the employee of my own company. So are you saying that this tax that we're talking about, Social Security tax, I actually have control over that because I can adjust my yearly income. So I could be somewhere between one seventy-seven thousand and under four hundred thousand, and then it would just magically make that disappear. Absolutely. I mean, let's say if you're a regular corporation, right,、mm-hmm. and you're being taxed as an employee now. You have the option to actually change your structure from C corp to S corp. Now, as a S corp, any profits that are above and beyond your salary, they're not taxed for Social Security. So that I means okay, your salary is still going to be 
$200,000. It doesn't matter if you earn a million or $2 million profit, you're not going to be taxed. So as long as you have a salary that is anywhere, from, I mean, in reality, as, as long as you have a salary, you will not be taxed uh, over what the, your salary is. Now, if your salary is more than 400000 absolutely, now that 12.4% is going to kick in. But you don't want to do that when, because you have control of your company, your own company. Yeah. You decide how much your salary is and how you're going to be taxed for the rest of your salary. And this is the part that is very interesting, uh, you know, back to the book about Robert Kiyosaki talking about why the rich keeps getting richer. This is exactly what we're talking about. This kind of information um, that, you know, sadly either is not being made available or is made available but not widely distributed. This is why we do this here. And we have guests like Henry Aldana that come here and actually educate everybody, all of us who are actually interested in learning more about the tax code and doing things the right way. So now you know what questions to ask. You are able to ask intelligent conversations to accountant. And if your accountant has no idea what you're talking about, then maybe it's time for you to change your accountant. But in the meantime, uh, just keep taking notes. This is actually very great, useful information that's going to help us plan for the better. And since we already made that segue into business, now it seems that the new tax goal seems to favor anything that has to do with renewable energy, anything that has to do with infrastructure, anything that has to do with healthcare and, and any field related to that. Does that mean, let's say for example, I'm a realtor and I have to show houses going around and, and I need a car, right? Like sometimes I have to jump from one neighborhood to another and walking might not be the best option, especially if you're in the hot weather because hey, you might show up all sweaty to the showing. Does that mean that as a realtor, I can take advantage of a Tesla and then just use that as part of my business? Like what kind of credits or, or benefits do I get out of something like that? Well, de definitely. Let, let's start with, um, let's start with actually, you know, let's say that you're real estate and you have a vehicle, right? So you use your vehicle uh, a lot because you drive to visit your clients, uh, go see properties. First, just the fact that you have a vehicle, you can deduct it. But however, let's talk about the renewable uh, energy credits, in this case, electrical cars, right? Mm -hmm. You buy an electrical car, now, um, especially uh, at this moment, there's a credit. I mean, there's a credit of $5,400 um, $5, that you get for buying an electrical car. Uh, and also, uh, so that means that you're getting a credit for, for using this vehicle, right, that is electrical. So let's say that you bought the car for $60,000, but now you're getting a credit for, uh, Five thousand four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now the truth is, the car didn't cost you sixty thousand. It cost you fifty-five. 50, yeah, yeah, fifty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Let's say fifty-five thousand dollars. First, you're paying less, and second, you now you get now you're being able to not only help yourself paying less taxes because you reduce um, what you're paying. I mean, what you what you paying in in the vehicle, then you, you can also not only not only you're getting the five thousand dollars credit plus you also can depreciate that's a different but depreciate the vehicle you're helping the planet you're helping your pockets you're helping everybody that, you know this is perfect so once again it comes down to education now you are being able to tap into a vehicle a brand new vehicle that not only helps save the earth ideally and uh, you are also getting tax credit for purchasing that vehicle and now you get to use it for your business and make you look good as a realtor and at the same time you get to depreciate it so that's another write-off or a deductible let's say for example Absolutely. in this case we're talking Absolutely. about depreciation so it helps you in the end reduce your taxable income even more Absolutely. but only if you're doing it the right way which is the way we're just talking about now since we're talking about electrical cars and renewal of energy how about solar panels how does that apply for either homeowners or real estate investors who are looking to maybe partner up with um, you know, solar panel businesses and, and want to build up new homes, flip new homes that are more energy efficient. How does that work for them? Well, de definitely. Uh, let's talk about the panels, right? electrical yeah. panels. Mm -hmm. Not only you're getting also, uh, you know, a deduction, the same thing as the car, right? I mean, you, you're getting the, the credit, you're getting the same type of credit, but also you're increasing the value of your property. Oh, yeah, so you get right. double, you know, you get, you get double whammy. You get to, to, you get the credit for buying uh, electrical panels mm -hmm. in your house. You're making it more efficient. You're now, um, at the same time, you're increasing, you're, you're increasing the value of your property. 
So, you know, it's like, you know, getting a double whammy because yeah. you get the, uh, uh, the credit for investing in an in a electrical panel for your home. At the same time, it provides uh, more value now your property that just went up in value. Yeah, and you also save money on electricity, you know, in the long run. I mean, it's very minor now, but then it eventually uh, adds up. And in addition to that, you're also contributing to the well-being of the planet, like yeah. the world that you live in. It seems to be kind of like a win-win situation for everybody. But as you and I know, there's always going to be some drawbacks for us to take into consideration. And one of those drawbacks is the increase in the tax bracket for businesses, right? So can you talk about that for a little bit, but at the same time explain them that it's not all as bad as it seems? Well, uh, definitely. First, uh, we know that corporate tax uh, rates are going up. They're going up from 21% to 29%. I mean, definitely, they're, they're gonna, they look, they're going up. Mm -hmm. And if you're not aware of it, most most people who are not aware how to really deal with it, mm -hmm. they're going to end up paying more taxes. Right. However, you know, that's that's an opportunity for, for you to see, okay, what else can I do? So, uh, as we know, regardless if what happens, uh, assuming that... We, we have a new president, tax rates, they're just going up. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, that means um, that we can actually take other, other we, we start looking for other credits. I mean, what, exactly. what else? Exactly. What, what kind of credits can we apply to our business? All right, we, we can apply an example. We can actually apply the retirement plan. I mean, right now, mm -hmm. right as, as we are right now, you can deduct 100% of any retirement plan that you put in practice, either for yourself or for your employees. So now, the new uh, proposal now is going to additional give you incentives and credits so you can actually create and put new um, retirement plans for your employees so not only you're helping um, employees stay with you or helping your company so these employees actually get inspired or they get uh, they get motivated to stay with the company because they're, you're providing them with a retirement plan but you're also actually helping your company in paying less taxes because you're getting all this credit. So definitely it's a win-win. Right. It's definitely a win-win and it's something that not that many people know about. When people hear about 401k plans or any type of retirement plan, they tend to think, oh, but I don't work for a major corporation. I don't work for uh, a big company that it's a multinational and therefore I don't apply for it. No, no. Anybody can get access to a retirement plan. Even you as a business owner, maybe you have a company with only five employees you as a business owner can provide that benefit to your employees and that's how you differentiate yourselves from other people. Most people come to me and they ask me, hey, I don't even know what to do with this employee. I don't know how to motivate them or perhaps even how to make them stay longer. Should I pay them more money? And yes, more money always helps, but sometimes it's not about the money. Sometimes it's all about how do I feel that I fit in here? Like, do I have a plan for retirement? And the fact that you're facilitating that for them gives them something to look up to. Oh, now I don't need to feel bad because I am not a major corporation. I am in a small business, but you know what? My employees, they feel great with me. They want to stay with me. And in addition to that, I can take all my contributions to their retirement plan and deduct that 100% because it's viewed as an expense for my company, which means in the end, I'm gonna pay less taxes, correct? Correct, absolutely. And then, and then you're gonna get new credits and that's about the new proposal. You're gonna get credits for actually doing this. And to the details of how much the credits are gonna be, but there's gonna be you know, credits for implementing retirement plans. And so in addition to retirement plans, uh, we were talking about it earlier today, there's also another credit that's out there that's going to incentivize or motivate more businesses to create jobs in America. Why don't you share with a, a little bit about that with uh, everybody? Well, absolutely. You know, right now we live in a global uh, economy. Um, American companies are doing business everywhere. Um, and obviously what happens, all these companies take, take American jobs abroad. That means all that productivity, it's gone. So therefore now, um, the new proposal is actually the, uh, companies, American companies that are doing business outside, they're going to get a credit for bringing the jobs back. So definitely they're going to they, they're get a 10% credit, uh, up to 21% credit for just bringing those jobs back to the United States. Uh, absolutely, that creates uh, a, the a domino effect where actually creates new jobs, creates better economy, 
and obviously uh, it, it's it's win-win for everybody here in the United States. On the other side, right? If you if you decide to take your jobs outside the United States, you're going to be heavily penalized for continuing to take your jobs outside the United States. Mm -hmm. So definitely it's a win-win. Um, and I think it's one of the greatest things that they're doing. It's totally win-win because, you know, it brings uh, jobs back to the United States and that just creates a, a better economy, so. So, okay, so we're starting to see the pros and cons. It seems that we're having more good things than bad things overall, as long as you have the right information so you can implement that and help you offset the quote-unquote higher taxes for businesses. Um, but now I want to transition more into investments, right? Uh, so many of us are following us because they either invest in real estate, some of them invest in uh, the stock market, or some of them just simply want to learn so they can better prepare themselves for the investing world, right? How are investments impacted in the new tax code? So let's talk about capital gains, for example. Right. Capital gains, uh, the current law, um, if you... Um generate up to $40,000 in capital gains, uh, they're tax-free, you pay zero tax. Uh, anywhere from, from um, 40,000 to 400 and I believe 477, I believe is the, the right number, uh, then the tax goes up to 15%. Any, anything over that is 20%. Right now, um, the new um, proposal, uh, as we know it right now, uh, it's gonna be 39% flat and that's that's the proposal obviously it might mm -hmm. change again so um, in terms of capital gains meaning any investments that you buy and that you hold longer than one year then they're considered capital gains and therefore um, at this moment I mean you have several options right I mean I think that you can you can either b sell right now and, and then wait until what happens and then invest in other in other create other investments or well, again, it's usually you're investing for long term, so it doesn't matter yeah. who, what, who's in power, who's, who's the president, and what um, fiscal policy they have. Uh, at the end, if you're investing for the long term, you should not be worried about it because it's long term. And that's um, when tax planning comes into place and becomes very important, right? So once again, there's no such a thing as a one-size-fits-all. It all depends on your investment plan, your investment goals. Let's say, for example, as I mentioned in many other episodes, uh, you have this real estate investment that you made and you were never too keen of it, you were never too happy with it, but you know it was performing, so you're like, oh, whatever, I'm just gonna stick to it, and now all of a sudden the market is booming and, and everybody's demanding houses, the prices are going up. This might be the chance for you to make a move and, and, and be able to, to still take advantage of the, um, smaller tax bracket in this case before it turns into 39 right but to henry's point if you don't have any plans to sell you're very happy with it you have a great tenant uh you know money keeps flowing in it doesn't matter if biden is going to be in power for the next four years for all i know year five might be someone else and that That's person true. might want to revert back to everything right yeah. and so since we're talking about selling real estate and or whether keeping it I've heard a lot of noise around 1031 exchanges, right? This is like one of the favorite strategies that a lot of real estate investors like to apply because it helps them save taxes and um, it, it forces you one way or the, the, the other to continue to grow your real estate portfolio to get it um, to buy a property that's bigger than the one that you sold previously. So how, how is that going to be impacted for well, everybody? Uh, well, I mean, you know, you know that 1031 actually helps you build uh, your portfolio, uh, real estate portfolio, mm -hmm. tax-free. I mean, that's, that's what 1031 does. There's, there's noise that it might be repelled, that might, it might uh, change or might be totally taken away, right? That big um, um, tax incentive. But at the end, let's assume that it was taken uh, and we no longer have it available. You, I mean, right now, I guess, right? Right now you're in real estate, so I guess right now is the best time to sell if you weren't if you're not thinking of growing and, and staying long term in, in real estate. This is the right moment could be that you can sell and, and hold on to, to your to your money and invest it in other in, in other assets. But even at that, I mean again, like uh, Lucelle said, if, says, if you are uh, in real estate for the long term, uh, wait because again, I mean a president or the administration is gonna is gonna be only four years. 
But if you're doing well with your real estate, just keep it. At the end, it's like, hold it, right? But it's not just that. There's also loopholes that you are immensely passionate about. So 1031, one way or the other, is viewed as a loophole. And you were mentioning earlier today that, let's say, if they were to take this away, there's always going to be new loopholes that come into the picture. So you were sharing a, a bit about the story of how these loopholes got created, right? So before it was like 91% tax or something yeah, like that? Absolutely. Well, you know, loop, I mean, there's always loopholes. And remember, the higher the tax rates increases, the more loopholes are going to be. Mm. In, in the 1950s, uh, the tax rate was 91%. I mean, that means that every dollar you earn, you were paying 91 cents in tax. You were paying the government to live, right, to breathe. And now it's, it's only 21% or whatever, 29% depends on your tax bracket. But we're not as high. So what happened, This there was a um, movie producer who got a bonus when he retired. It was almost, uh, almost $3 million uh, bonus that he got. And he, he was going to be paying about... $2.6 million in taxes. Oh, wow. So he decided, you know what, I'm gonna hire somebody, I'm gonna hire a lawyer or somebody that goes in inference. Um, Congress. Congress, and so they can make laws, and he, he did, and he did. Oh, and he that. only ended up paying 25% of that, I mean, at the time. So the rest of the rich people and of the rich, they started seeing, hey, it works. So they decided to start putting their money into lobbies so they can go and influence and, and change the tax laws. And as of today, you know, the higher the tax rates are, the more they're going to be investing in lobbies so they can create new loopholes. So it doesn't matter at the end. We always say that the rich never pay taxes because they always find a way of not paying taxes. So, and this is the, the key, right? This is the, the secrets that you, if you want to yeah. pay less taxes, you definitely got to know a lot of this um, secrets that will help you reduce your taxes yeah and by that we don't mean do it yourself and just you know google something and read a book and start applying all of these loopholes no what we mean by this is hey educate yourself um yes we talk about the rich getting richer all the time and the rich getting access to that information but now we're making it available uh thanks to experts like you henry and 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 that's why you're watching right so you can start taking notes uh see the things that you can actually start implementing right now and whatever is it that you cannot hey maybe it's time for you to have that conversation with your accountant or anyone in your power team that can help you make this happen and say hey this is what i heard what can you tell me about this? And if they have no clue what you're talking about, once again, maybe this is time for you to move on and, and find another specialist, which is why we have Henry here. If you want to get in touch with Henry, his contact information is going to be down here in the description box below where uh, you can just simply, you know, book an appointment in his calendar and uh, have a consultation with him. But before you even do that, let's continue to conversation. We have uh, one last thing I definitely want to touch base on, and that's the the, um, famous pass-through entities that we have here. So there's a lot of noise about pass-throughs being taken away or something like that. So let's share your thoughts, but first let's define what a pass-through entity is for those who are actually tuning in for the first time and they don't really know much about the subject. And then we go into the juicy stuff and, and just share that with everybody. Right. Well, let's define pass-through first. A pass-through is a legal entity um, that is a, a fiscal uh, entity that pays no taxes. Mm. And like an example, like a, a corporation, a regular corporation pays, pays its own taxes based on the, on the profits. A pass-through entity is, it could be a corporation, could be a partnership, it could, uh, it could be a, any other entity that, that's not required to pay taxes. They have to file taxes, but they don't pay taxes. And when it means pass-through means Profits or losses passes directly to the owners. There you go. So, um, what they're saying is, hey, we're going to be able to get out, get away, and, rid and getting rid of pass-throughs. That's not going to happen. Pass-throughs have always existed. What Even they before Trump. Oh, absolutely. They oh. existed for about two hundred years. There you go. <laughs> so they're not going to go away. What they're saying is, okay, uh, with the new tax cuts and job creation uh, act, there was a new tax credit, which is the small business tax credit. That means that if if you generate a thousand dollars, right, in profits, then um, you got twenty percent discount. That means you're not going to report a thousand dollars. You go, you will only report eight hundred dollars in profits. So that means you're getting twenty percent of tax-free money, right? 
So that is going to, according to the new proposal, that's going to be going away. Not completely. It's going to go away after you reach four hundred four hundred thousand dollars in profits. So you st still is going still is going to be available from zero to to four hundred thousand dollars. So the first four hundred thousand dollars that you have profits, you're still going to get a twenty percent. But once you pass the four hundred mark, that means you no longer have that twenty percent credit. You so you're still going to have the first four hundred thousand dollars twenty percent credit. That means out of 400,000, uh, you, you're going to be reporting 20% less. But once you pass that, there's no longer the credit. It disappears. So you see, th thank you for clarifying that because a lot of people were actually confused. I was one of uh, the many that got confused thinking that, hey, is he going to take this away from like all the small business owners? Because the majority of small businesses have this type of entity so that they can maximize the savings and their taxes and be able to take that money and reinvest it into the business and continue to create more jobs and stuff like that. And if they took that away, then, well, you know, most of my money is going to be gone in taxes. So what does it mean for my business? I, I'm, I might get out of business. So no, now you know, that's the trick. It's all about taking the information, removing the noise around it, and see how you can work with the information that is available. Absolutely. Now, Henry, there's a lot of changes that are about to happen. Well, I mean, this was a year full of changes, but um, it seems that we're gonna have even more changes coming through sometime next year. So what do you recommend they do in order to prepare themselves today and also to you know, embrace the changes that are about to come sometime next year in a tax effective way. So assuming that we have a new president, definitely there are changes. First, let's talk about what's tax preparation and what's tax planning. Tax preparation is, is about preparing your taxes. Tax planning is about planning in advance mm -hmm. of what you, the outcome you want, right? Yes. Usually correct. most people say, hey, you know what? I have to pay a lot of taxes. My accountant didn't help me. And, and that's most of the people, that, that's the biggest problem in the United States, people go, they hire a tax preparer and it's okay, they're good at preparing taxes and mm -hmm. it's, there's one thing. Tax preparation is for compliance. Tax planning is so you can actually reduce your tax liability. Yeah. There, is, there is so many strategies that you can use to reduce your taxes in a, on a legal, ethical and moral way, but you have mm -hmm. to know, you have to plan it, you have to have a, 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 a map, a blueprint that will help you reduce your taxes. And that's the best way you can do. That's the best thing you can do. Plan ahead, know what you have, know what options you have, know what you can do to implement in your business so your tax liability is gonna be less. And the beauty is that you know in advance. You know in advance how much taxes you're gonna be paying as long as you have designed uh, tax strategies that is gonna help you reduce and put more, more money back into your pocket. And this is when you see a lot of people traveling multiple times a year and all of a sudden you hear people, oh, my accountant told me to go travel. And you're like, what, really? Your accountant told you to, to travel? And it ha like again, planning. Everything has to do with planning. You cannot wait for things to happen and just do things after the fact or fix things after the fact. Like Henry mentioned, a tax preparer, it's an after the fact thing. You come in with your W-2 and have that ready. And some, for some people, that's great. But if you have assets, if you have business, you can't just show up to your accountant and be like, oh, well, here are my receipts and, and, and fix it for me and, and, and see what you, know, you find online. And I've heard of all of these tax credit that you can apply. Just apply that to my taxes. It doesn't work that way. In fact, when we work with Henry, we have a tax plan that goes out to five years. A five years worth of planning where you can coordinate, hey, this is when you're gonna go ahead and travel, this is when you're gonna go ahead and do this, this is when you're gonna do that. And that, everything, it's written out in a book. It's evidence, it's, it's all in writing. In this country, everything has to be in writing, so it has to be set in stone. And that's how you work out the preparation so you can carry out ways to save taxes and see where those tax credits, the 80 available that uh, Henry mentioned out there, can fit in into what you're trying to do. Maybe you can even apply all 80 of them. You just simply don't know it. Yeah. And a tax preparer will certainly not know something like that because they're focused on the day-to-day, -day, on the operations, just making things happen. Yeah. When you have a tax plan, it's a mastermind. Like you have to think about all the steps and see how the pieces tie in together. So hopefully this information helped you get the right key points to help you go and have that intelligent conversation with whether it's 
your accountant or whether it's you go and interview an accountant if you're looking for an accountant once again we have Henry Aldana here uh, he's been working with uh, Novarise and you've seen a couple of videos of him this year uh, in our channel so make sure you tune into those as well and if you're ready to just go ahead and jump in and have a consultation with Henry his information is going to be all down here uh, feel free to visit the website and uh, fill in the form and that will get you uh, a consultation free of charge with Henry is that correct yeah. Absolutely. And I'll definitely, it'll be a pleasure to, to be able to give you some feedback and, and maybe give you a few um, tips on how actually you can start uh, saving in, uh, in, in your taxes. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Henry, once again for your time and for uh, taking the time to educate everybody here today. And uh, until then, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.